In this problem, we are asked to consider the sinusoidal voltage VT, and that's equal to the maximum amplitude of our voltage times the cosine with the frequency minus the phase angle, and this is in volts. There are notes in the description with this formula that actually talks a little bit more in depth about this. So now we're gonna solve for all of these different things. What is the maximum amplitude of our voltage? Well, this 170, whatever number is out here, is the maximum voltage, it is Vm. And we could see that if we look at the actual formula, again, linked in the notes. So we're gonna see that our Vm is equal to 170 volts. We're asked, what is the frequency of our Vt in hertz? There's a couple different formulas that we can use to find frequency. The first is that frequency is equal to one over T, which is the period, T is period. However, we aren't given the period, so we can look at another formula, which is that our omega is equal to two pi times frequency. We know that our angular frequency right here is our omega. Omega is equal to angular frequency. So what we can do is plug in our 120 times pi into our w. We're gonna set this equal to our two pi times f. And from here, we can cancel out the pi's divide both sides by two, and then we are gonna get that our frequency is equal to 60 hertz. For part C, we are asked, what is the frequency of Vt in radians per second? So now we are going to look at the frequency for our specific equation. And the frequency that we are given in radians per second is that our omega is equal to 120 times pi. I could have wrote this down earlier, but this is the formula that we are basing this given equation off of. Now we are asked to find the phase angle in radians. We know that our phase angle is going to be this right here, this negative 60 degrees. So since it's asking for it in radians, we need to convert this. We are going to have negative 60 degrees times the conversion, which is pi over 180 degrees. You can think of if we're converting two radians, we have the radians, which is our pi on top, in our degrees on bottom. And we're going to convert it two degrees in a second. So this is just how you do it for radians. And we're gonna get a negative pi over three. And this is going to give us approximately negative 1.05. And that is the answer for this one. We were asked what is the phase angle in degrees. So now we can convert this back two degrees, even though we know that our phase angle is gonna be 60, but we'll convert this back two degrees just to show that so we know that our phase angle for radians is negative 1.05, and this is in rads. So to get to degrees, we're going to have our degrees on top, which is 180 degrees, over our pi, and this is for our rads. Our rads are going to cancel out, and then we can just divide this. And this will give us 60, as we know it to be right here, and it is negative. So the answer for this part is going to be negative 60 degrees. Now we are asked what is the period in milliseconds. Since we know the frequency, we can just plug this in because our period is one over frequency. And if we were asked to find frequency, if we knew our period, it would be one over the period. So our T is equal to one over 60. This is gonna give us approximately 0 0.0167. And this is going to be in seconds. We want it in milliseconds. So we're multiplying this by one milli. And this is over 10 to the negative cubed. So we can move our decimal one, two, three. And then we are going to get that our answer, t, is equal to 16.7 milliseconds. And that is the answer for this one. Lastly, we are asked, what is the first time after t equal to zero that v of t is equal to 170 volts? So we want our v of t to equal 170. Looking back at our equation up here, we're going to plug this in. We have 170 volts, and that's equal to 170 times our cosine. And then inside of here, we have our frequency first, which is 120 pi times t minus our phase angle, which is just 60 degrees, and this is for volts. Well, we want our vt to equal 170, so we basically have to kind of get rid of this. This all has to equal 1. You can think of it like that, because if all of this is equal to 1, then 170 is equal to 170. And the only way to get it to be 1 is if cosine is equal to 0. And the only way to get it to be equal to 1 is if everything in cosine is equal to 0, because cosine of 0 is 1. So we can rewrite this only looking at the inside part as 120 pi times t minus 60 degrees. 
Now we cannot work in both radians and degrees, so we're going to have to convert one of these. I'll just convert radians because it's right here. So we're going to have pi over 180 degrees. Now we can set this equal to zero because we want it to be zero. We're going to divide these and we're going to get a pi divided by three. We can factor out the pi because they're like terms and then we'll move the one over three to the right side and we're going to get a 120t is equal to one over three. Now we can just divide this. t is equal to one divided by three divided by 120 and then we get 0 0.00278 and this is our time in seconds. Again we want this in milliseconds so we are going to convert it. We know we have 1 milli over 10 to the negative cubed. We're going to flip this over so it's going to be basically times 10 cubed and we're going to move this over 1, 2, 3. So we get 2.78 seconds approximately and that we can see is the answer for this problem and that is how you would look at our sinusoidal voltage. If you want more introduction to circuit analysis, there's a playlist in the description as well as notes that'll help with the entire coursework.